to worship today. It is good to see you here, and I know we have friends joining us online this week as well. So thanks for joining us, however works best for you. You may have noticed that's not Kareem back there. Today we are welcoming Natalie. Pronounce your last name for me. Oh, did you guys hear her? I feel like the mics picked her up. Okay, Natalie joins us sporadically throughout the week, usually on Wednesdays, in practice on this beautiful organ that we have here. And she is subbing for Kareen today, so we are grateful to have her with us today, blessing us, us with her skills. So thanks for being here, ma'am. Um, a reminder that we have prayer cards, which are a little different. We're changing how we're doing our prayer. We're not really changing. We're, we're going to say enhancing how we do our prayer requests. If you're looking in the pews and you have the slightly more narrow pew prayer cards, that's fine. You can still use those. We have a lot of them. We're going to use the ones in the pews for as long as we need to. But if you have a prayer request, feel free to write it on this card. If you're thinking of a prayer request now, you can get up during one of the hymns and drop it in the offering plate. And when the, when the plates come forward, I'll grab them and I'll read them during our prayers for the people to share them. This way it makes sure I don't get it wrong and we get it listed correctly in the Tuesday tidings. So we're still going to take prayer requests before the prayer this week. We're just easing into this new way of doing things because it takes a few weeks to change things. So be aware that these are out in the narthex or you can use the ones in the pews. If you are interested in being a liturgist or an usher or anything else, let us know. We tend to email the same group of people over and over again for those things. But if it's something you've secretly always wanted to do and no one's ever asked you, that doesn't mean you're not qualified. It means you just have to speak up and say, I would love to bring the offering plates forward. I have my whole life, I have wanted to do that. And no one has ever asked me, well, let us know and we will make it happen. Or if you'd like to be a liturgist, that is a thing we can arrange. So keep that in mind. Our bulletin is also full of announcements. You may have noticed Bunko is back, and I heard that that was quite the thing in the day. So um, the day being before COVID. Um, so there is a sign-up sheet in the narthex. I saw it out there this morning. If you have questions, the folks you think might know about it are the folks who know about it. Um, and I see Elaine right here, and I'm certain she'll be willing to answer any questions you have about it. There's also a way to help the ELC get some new goodies for the kiddos in there. And as another note about the ELC, they are still hiring. They have been hiring for what seems like forever. We cannot have church folks volunteer there. That's a state requirement. You have to be an employee to help out over there. But if you would be willing to become an employee and only work to cover, say, vacations or shortages, let us know. There is a, a good amount of training that has to happen. you got to get different clearances. So it's not a simple process, but it's not too difficult. And even if you only wanted to cover a vacation or two, it would really make a big difference for them. So think about that as well, or if you know somebody who might be a good fit for that. Are there any other announcements that need to be made before I open us in a word of prayer? All right, seeing none, let me pray. Lord, come into this space. Join us wherever we might be, whether we are worshiping here in this sanctuary or the sanctuaries you've placed us in, in our homes or wherever it might be that we are taking part in this worship service from. Enter in. Let us feel your presence. Let the next hour be simply connecting with you. Let your words speak not just to our hearts, but our minds and our souls. Transform us over the course of this time together. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, Robbie. Please stand if you are able. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Remember us, Lord, when you show favor to your people. 
Let us know the blessing of your chosen ones and the gladness of those you love. showed mercy to his people when they worshiped a false idol. With confidence in that same mercy being shown to us, let us now join together in our unison prayer of confession. God, we know what it is good and right, but we do what is hateful and evil. We live according to the flesh and resist the work of the spirit. We fail to love our neighbors which means we fail to fulfill your law. Forgive us, loving God. What can separate us from the love of Christ? Nothing, neither death nor life, nor anything in all creation can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. The peace of Christ be with you. explain to you guys why I'm wearing a mask and I was assuming that you guys got the email but 
I was in contact with someone, not actually close contact, but I was in contact with someone who has tested positive for COVID. That was on Thursday. I have tested negative since then and have no symptoms, but just to be extra safe, I am wearing a mask. So um, if you are wondering why I'm doing that, that's why. It is always our intention to make sure we're keeping you guys as safe as possible. So um, if there's ever a reason we'd be concerned about anything, we will of course share that with the congregation at large. All right, hi friends. Do you see what I'm wearing? This, my fancy stole here today was handmade by Lily for me. And I thought today was a good day to wear it because I haven't yet. So thanks. Okay, um, can you guys remember who we've been talking about in church? I'll, go ahead, do you have any? Um, I'll give you a guess. They led their people out of Egypt. Well, God's people. God used them to part the Red Sea. It is Moses, you're right. So we've been talking about Moses. And Moses had someone who like talked for him because Moses was nervous and was afraid he couldn't speak clearly. Do you remember who that was? No. Ask the grown-ups for help. Who was it? <laughs> Aaron. Aaron, his brother. Very good. Thank you, grown-ups. So it was his brother Aaron. What do you think it would be like being Moses' brother? I don't know. So Moses is the one that God talks directly to that gets the cool stick that like you can put on the ground and it might turn into a snake and then you pick it back up and it's back to being a staff that God tells to like hit a rock and water comes out of it. And you're the one who just says the words he sa tells you to say. I'd definitely be a little jealous. You might be a little jealous. It might not be fun, right? Yeah. yeah. You don't have any siblings, so you don't. you don't have to worry about that. But um, you might have friends that are good at things you're not good at. Or even just family members that sometimes get more attention than you do, right? So today we're going to read a little bit about Aaron. We've focused a whole lot on, in fact, we called this whole season Moments with Moses. That's what I called it. I don't know if you knew that, but we've been calling it Moments with Moses. But today we're going to stop and think about Aaron. And the story today is about the golden calf, which we're going to read in a few minutes. You're going to read a psalm that explains what happened, and then I'm going to read the actual scripture. But basically, in the story we read today, Moses is just up on that mountain, and he's up there for a long time. And we see how Aaron reacts when Moses isn't around. Now, if somebody had always been there telling you what to do and what God wanted for you, and you were going to share that information with everybody, and then all of a sudden, they're not there, how might that feel? Maybe at first you might be relieved, right? Because, like, finally you get your chance. But then when, they, when he doesn't come down for the mountain, do you think he got a little scared? Like, how am I going to know what to say? Yeah. And so the people, they do not a great thing. Do you remember what the very first commandment is? You can ask the grown-ups again if you want. What's the first commandment? Love the Lord your God, yeah. And then you don't worship any, fall, any gods other than God, right? Mm -hmm. So those are the first couple commandments, actually. So the Lord God is your God alone, nobody else. You don't get any other gods, and you don't make false idols, right? You don't make something else to be a god. Do you know what Aaron and the people do? Make a false idol. They do, they make a false idol. They make a big golden calf. Was that a good plan? So, that's a great question. What would you do with a big golden calf? I mean, they would. Well, I mean, you wouldn't have to feed it, but um, they worshiped it like it was a god. Oh, then no, it's not a good plan. Not a good plan, right? So, sometimes when we're feeling like 
afraid or we've been jealous and now we're feeling afraid, do we make the best decisions in those times? For sure, no. For sure, no. And do you think that then it's over? That's it, the end of the story. We never hear about Aaron again. He was a bad guy. He gets written out of the book, and we go back to Moses where he leads them back the right way. No. That seems unlikely, right? It seems very unlikely. Yeah. Well, here what happens in the story, they do get in trouble, but God doesn't forget about them even though they make mistakes. So sometimes when we're maybe jealous or upset that we're not getting the attention we want or we're always standing in someone's shadow, we feel badly. And then when they're not around, we might not know how to handle it and we make bad choices. But even in those times, God's still with us as we're going to see when we read the scriptures today. All right, should we pray? Yeah. All right. One. All right, one, two, three. Lord, I thank you that even when we make mistakes and feel all the things we feel as people, you're with us. That sometimes we do have to have consequences for poor choices, but that doesn't mean that we can't still be in relationship with you. Remind us that we are loved and can stay connected to you in all times. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. All right, you're going to head over and read. God of grace, open our minds to receive your truth. Con conform our lives to your will. Shape our hearts by your love. All to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. Psalm 106, verses 1 through 6 and 19 through 23. Pl praise the Lord. O oh, give thanks to the Lord. For he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. Who can utter the mighty doings of the Lord? Or declare all his praise? Happy are those who observe justice. Who do, right, who do righteousness at all times. Remember me, O Lord, when you show favor to your people, help me, when you deliver them, that, that I may see the prosperity of your chosen ones, that I may rejoice in the gladness of your nation, that I may glory in your heritage. Both we and our ancestors have sinned. We have committed iniquity have done wickedly. They made a calf at Horeb and worshiped a cast image. They exchanged the glory of God for the image of an ox that eats grass. They forgot God, their savior, who has done great things in Egypt, wondrous works in the land of Ham, and, and awesome deeds by the Red Sea. Therefore, he said he would destroy them had not Moses, his chosen one, stood in the breach before him to turn away his wrath from destroying them. The word of the Lord. Now, our second reading, as we already alluded to, picks up on the story of Aaron and Moses, and they've made it through 28 chapters since we first met them, and that seems like a long time, and in this case, it is a long time since we first met Aaron at the beginning. The Israelites are sitting at the foot of Mount Sinai or Mount Horeb, depending on the reading, and they're waiting impatiently for Moses to return. Our second reading can be found in Exodus chapter 32, verses 1 through 14. When the people saw that Moses delayed from coming down from the mountain, the people gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come, make gods for us who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Aaron said to them, Take off the gold rings 
that are on the ears of your wives, your sons and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from them and formed it into a mold and cast an image of a calf. And they, and they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made the proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a festival to the Lord. They rose early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought sacrifices of well-being. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to revel. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you out up, out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone so that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them. And of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God. And said, Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath. Change your mind and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven. And all this land that I have promised, I will give to your descendants and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster he planned to bring on his people. The word of the Lord. This story, the story of the golden calf, has a lot of sermons in it. There's a lot of different places to take this passage. The importance of patience. What it means to wait on God. How even in this example... Forgiveness was offered to those repentant, God's commitment to his covenant with us, how quickly our hearts can turn when we're not focused. The list goes on and on. Do you know what? I'm not going to preach any of those sermons today. Today we're going to focus on Aaron's story throughout the larger narrative. I understand it isn't really fair to create a, store, a sermon based on someone just a few moments of their life. You could probably find two stories of my life taken out of context that would tell any story you wanted to make it spin towards, right? So I'm attempting to tell Aaron's story, taking all of the scriptures about him into consideration, focusing on these ones. So when we were first introduced to Aaron, when Moses was bickering with God, remember that? We talked about it about a month ago. Moses was uncomfortable with what God asked him to do, and God, being more gracious than we often give Old Testament God credit for, offers a compromise. Aaron's going to be the microphone for Moses. Basically, in our introduction to him, Aaron's a tool that God gives Moses to get the job done. Now, as time goes on, Aaron's role changes and grows. 
Eventually, God ordains Aaron and his sons as the first priests. This is a huge change. Aaron went from being a tool to the very first priest. Now, there's clearly a subplot here showing how even if we feel like we are in a meaningless role, that nothing we do matters, God is keenly aware of us, of our giftedness. And no matter what is going on, God will find a way to work through us in all situations. The passage I read, it took place right after the Ten Commandments had been shared, just like we read them last week. The people, including their priests, were well aware of those first couple of commandments, which you'll remember, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. And then what happened? They made a golden calf as a new god. How does that happen? How do these people who actually witnessed the miracle of God delivering the Ten Commandments in that scary scene we talked about last night, last, not last night, we'll call it last Sunday. Maybe you watched the video back last night, but last Sunday, the loud, scary thunder that shook the earth, the lightning bolts, they were terrified. What happened? They really messed it up. And Aaron, Aaron of all people, he for sure knows. There's no question here if he understands right from wrong. However, in Aaron's defense, there is a lot going on. I mean, Moses has been up on that mountain for a long time. The people thought that perhaps their leader had abandoned them or Worse, maybe he died. It was out of fear that Aaron acted. And when we're afraid, we don't always make the best choices, do we? Think about it. When was the last time you were genuinely afraid of something? How'd you handle it? Typically, when we're afraid, we just act or react before we even think about it. Jason and I have this friend who, oh, I guess it was a few years ago, she really burnt her hand badly. She had a candle burning in her home. I often have a candle in my home. And somehow, this paper bag that was on the table, I guess too close to the candle, caught on fire. Now, standing here, removed from the story, it's really easy for us to all say that she should have just grabbed some water from the sink and dumped it on it, or maybe a fire extinguisher. But in the moment, all she saw was a fire on her kitchen table. She was terrified. Her son and her infant baby were nearby, and there was a flame on her table. So what did she do? She picked up that bag with her bare hand, and she threw it in the sink. And then she turned the water on and put the fire out. Turning the sink on did solve the problem, but a new problem was created, right? Because she grabbed that flaming bag, she significantly burned her hand. In the moment when she grabbed it, she didn't think about hurting herself. She was protecting her kiddos, right? But because she acted out of fear, I'm not going to say it was the wrong thing. She protected her family, right? She hurt herself. She injured herself significantly. Aaron, in this situation... Let the people's fear shape his actions, perhaps his own fear. What had happened to his brother? The person whom he was connected to God through. And guys, we all do this. We do it all the time. We let other people's fear determine what we're going to do. I let other people's fear determine how I'm going to approach a situation. Sometimes it's what I think other people's fear might be. So I'm reacting to something based on what I'm worried about somebody else worrying about. And sometimes that's the best way to handle a circumstance. It could be the most grace-filled way to do it if you're really being empathetic and thinking about other people. 
But other times, I let the fears of others infect me. And then I, too, become fearful. And maybe I grab a flaming bag instead of thinking of another solution. Aaron participated in this false God-making for sure. He told them to bring the gold, right? He got caught up in the fear and the anxieties of the time. He let it get the best of him. But what happens after? In the part that's not covered in our reading for today, it touches on it, but if you read past it, what does God do with his golden calf disaster? We know. It was clear in our scripture. God was not happy. God was angry. Moses intercedes, steps in. Moses is a bold guy. We don't always give him credit for that. He intercedes, and he speaks to God on behalf of the Israelites. And there was indeed punishment among the Israelites. God afflicted them with a plague, but, and this is a big pause, God ended up renewing the covenant with Moses and the Israelites. You can find it in Exodus 34, verses 10 through 28. You see, the golden calf incident, it's not the end of the story. It could have been. It almost was, had Moses not interceded. But it's not the end of the story. Instead, it creates a new beginning. Throughout the scriptures, Aaron goes from being merely a tool to the first priest, to very clearly breaking the first commandment. And then he goes on to continue his work with Moses, with God, leading the Israelites to the promised land. My hope is that we take a couple of things away from this passage, this story. First, there is nothing that we experience in our lives that the people of this book haven't already experienced. That's not to diminish or minimize our experiences, but to bring us comfort that God's got us covered. We're not alone. When we are afraid and act rashly, we're in good company. We can turn to our brothers and sisters of faith and read their stories and find comfort in the grace and redemption that's offered. Secondly, no matter where you are, how underappreciated you might feel, God is working in that situation. Don't limit God by refusing to live into your circumstances. If that means that a job is beneath you, you're in a job that's beneath you or you feel beneath you, if you're surrounded by friends who don't appreciate you, if you're some situation in some way getting the short end of the stick, so be it for now. Because our God is great enough to work in all areas of the world in all situations, even when we can't see it or feel it or perceive it. Our God is one that reaches out to those on the margins and in the shadows. So, my friends, if you are only a cog in the wheel or a tool, as Aaron was, know that you are in good company. God is moving mountains, and somehow, some way, whether you know it or not, You are part of that, and it couldn't be done without you. Will you pray with me? Lord God, we are at different places in our lives, and we experience different things. There are times when we react without thinking, make rash choices, poor choices, Help us to take the moment to pause and listen for you before we jump into action. Lord, there are times when we feel almost invisible, 
so incredibly unimportant. Remind us that you are using each of us as you will, taking part in a much larger plan. Grant us the grace and peace to understand our limited view is nowhere near close to your great big picture, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From thence he shall come to punish the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of the sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord desires steadfast love, not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. Let us offer our gifts and lives to the Lord by doing justice, showing mercy, and walking humbly with God.
accept these humble offerings and use them to do your work in the world. Take our lives and all that we are. Use them to transform the world as we know it. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We are going to continue in a time of prayer. We have some updates. Debbie had her surgery this past week, and she is doing well, just waiting for the stitches to heal. But she wanted to thank everyone for their thoughts and prayers. So thank you all for that. Jane's sister-in-law, Sonia, continues to undergo chemo for her cancer. So let's continue to hold her in prayer as she's going through this. She has some pretty severe back pain, but it has improved, which is good. And she, of course, appreciates all of your prayers. I know our folks can feel it when they are receiving them. Denise Hughes is out of the coma. That's wonderful news and recovering. So continued prayers for Denise, but praise is that she's making progress. And um, Jay is recovering from MVA. That is from Dawn. From the Krenners, Missy Krenner, their son Alan, and their girls Ruth and Samantha, prayers for them. Missy was diagnosed with stage 2 breast cancer and will undergo a double mastectomy in early November. You Krenners have just really been going through it lately. We will, of course, hold Missy and her whole family. Her kiddos are young, her girls 8 and 10, so prayers for all of them as well. From Elaine, continued prayers for Taylor. We were praying for her a few weeks ago. She had um, a brain biopsy. Um, Unfortunately, at 30 years old, she has been diagnosed with brain cancer. So um, she will start radiation tomorrow. Prayers for Taylor, for Claire and Jim. um, How do you pronounce their last name? Hoke. You guys all know. You don't need me to tell you. So Claire and Jim Hoke's granddaughter, Julie's daughter, prayers for all of them. This is one of those tough things that leave us asking a lot of whys without answers. Um, From Kathy, prayers for Tom, who is experiencing severe nerve pain, and continued prayers for Celine as she figures out treatment for cancer. Are there any other prayer requests that we need to include? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. So prayers for Stephanie and her daughter for the fire at their home and and just answers to all the unanswered questions that are are happening right now. Absolutely. Yes, Miss Beth. Um, Prayers for Doug's brother, Dan, who's having his right lobe removed from his right lung. Um, And also prayers for our family, Vince and I, um, and Lynn, um, Brandon, So I am not smiling because I think it's silly. I'm smiling because I understand as a mama how hard it is when your kiddo is not close. Or maybe a dad. I just can't understand as a dad. So first prayers for um, Dan, who is Doug's brother. He's having a part of his lung removed. So prayers for that. And Brandon and his wife are moving to Allentown, um, which I don't know a lot about except the Billy Joel song. So lots of prayers for all of you guys as you're figuring out the new family dynamics with someone not being as close. So prayers for that transition. Anything else? Yes, Miss Depp. Yes. Prayers for Kareen and Elaine. They are out visiting their dad who's been caring for their uncle who's been in the hospital. We've been praying for him. So prayers that they have a wonderful 
time, uh, family time together, and safe travels. Absolutely. Oh, yes, Miss Laura, I see you there. Irma has returned home again, which is good news, and she thanks us for our continued prayers for her. All right, will you pray with me? Eternal God, you know our history of complicated conflicts, tense polarization and situations so politicized that we are afraid to say or pray anything. Yet, we know that you grieve the violence of war, that you condemn the acts of terrorism. We know that you grieve the historical suffering of both the Jews and the Palestinians. May our prayers for peace, Lord, be uttered out loud for all to hear. Our prayers for diplomacy and for difficult yet faithful conversations to resume. God, we groan in grief over the news of this war in Israel and Gaza. Pave a path towards peace in this age-old, tragic conflict. Protect the innocents wherever bombs of destruction fall. Be with those who are captured and the families of those who are captured. Offer a way out for those who are trapped. Awaken us to our common humanity our common human needs, no matter the walls that we have built. God of all things, be with us as we pay, pray for your peace and justice, not just overseas, but in our lives. Be with us as we pray for healing in situations that we cannot possibly comprehend. Gently receive our prayers, however they might be delivered, in moments of despair, in hard times of hard questions, in shouts of frustration, or whispers of gratitude. The world has been heavy this week, Lord. My heart has been heavy. I am so grateful that you are with me. Your rod and your staff, Lord, they comfort me. Thank you for the tiny moments of grace, for the reminders that even when we cannot find the way or the words, you are still by our side. Guide each of us, Lord. Restore us. Remind us who we are and how even when we feel helpless, hopeless, we have a holy purpose and hear us now, Lord, as we pray the prayer you taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will you stand as you are able and join me in our final hymn? <coughs>
are feeling the weight of some of those very heavy things we just prayed about, or you don't have any of those things in your life and you are in a season of blessing right now. Go knowing that God is with you in each of those seasons and everything in between. That you're not going anywhere by accident. God is with you, guiding you, leading you, perhaps holding you up or sustaining you when you don't realize it. Go in peace knowing the love of the Lord is with you always. Amen?